Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin. I am very frustrated with social media algorithms and how they pick and choose what they put in front of me. And more often than not, what's more important to the platform that I'm on is its interest versus my own. And what I've done over the last couple of months is start playing around with different self-hosted and hybrid self-hosted solutions to come up with a content engine that can give me useful information that I have a lot more control over. So every morning now, I get an email from my little algorithm that runs in a couple of different verticals. One is cord cutting and the other down here is gadgets. And what's really cool about all of this is that I'm giving my little algorithm about 150 headlines from RSS feeds from a number of reputable and popular websites and YouTube channels and other things that I follow. And this algorithm looks at all that stuff, figures out what I would like to see, and only from that list of sources, it gives me this email in the morning. And of course, I can add more sources over time. And what's really cool about how this thing is working is that if there's a hot topic of the day, so for example, the, these handheld gaming PCs have been talked about across many of my sources. And what it's smart enough to do is to know that these two different products here, the GPD Win 5 and the Asus ROG Ally, are both handheld gaming PCs, and it compiled all of the articles about these two products in one spot so I can kind of think about it as a single thing and decide whether or not I want to get that stuff in for review. And every morning when this thing fires off, I'm always surprised and pleased by how smart it is, even though I wasn't that smart <laughs> in putting it all together. So we're gonna step through how this works. I'm using a tool called N8N, and it's something I've been using a lot here uh, for some other projects, which we'll talk about over the course of the next couple of weeks. And I have this running on my Synology NAS. Now, the smarts of this right now are running with Google Gemini's free tier. I'll talk more about that in a minute. So it does go out to the cloud a little bit. And that's just because local models are just not smart enough to do this just yet. If I could get a local model to do this, I certainly would. But I'm not having to pay any API fees for this because it's only firing off once a day. And what's really fun about this and really cool about this is that I have more control over this recommendation engine versus booting up Facebook or X or some other platform that chooses for me without my interests always at heart. So why don't we dive into this now and see how it all works. Now at the heart of all of this are RSS feeds. Now unfortunately not every website offers RSS feeds any longer, but most of the big ones still do. And RSS stands for really simple syndication. And if you think about it, every web page has the same elements. You've got a title or a headline, you have a link for where that article lives, and then you have the content itself. And what RSS does is it standardizes that information into a format that every platform that supports it follows. So you can build out a list of RSS feeds and put them into an RSS reader. I use something called Bazcux here to do that. And what you get is essentially a fire hose. So every time a website fires off a new article, it shows up at the top of the list. The articles below that get pushed down and you've got a lot of content that you can look through. If you go to lon.tv slash RSS, you can see a video that I made about this back in 2022. It's all still relevant today. And RSS readers are still out there, even though our beloved Google reader was discontinued many years ago. And although RSS has fallen out of favor, at least in recent years, it's starting to gain some popularity again because people are beginning to want to have control over what they're seeing once more, at least I hope they are. And so this is a great entry point for getting your own algorithm working properly. Now, what I did is I used another tool here called TTRSS, and this is something that I'm self-hosting. And the reason why I'm using TTRSS is that it can take a whole bunch of feeds and consolidate them into one single feed. So for example, I've got a feed here called Gadgets. And when I click on this little button up here, it gives me a URL that will basically give me a feed of all of these different sources consolidated into its own RSS feed, which I then feed over to uh, N8N. So there's a little bit of complexity here in that I had to set up something as an intermediary. And the only reason why I had to set this up versus the feed reader that I usually use is that although Bazcux can combine a bunch of feeds into one, it was not giving me more than 10 or 15. And I wanted my algorithm to look at about 50 or so headlines per run. 
So let's take a look now and see how all of this comes together. So to recap, we've got all of these different websites. We're pulling in their RSS feeds. They're going into TTRSS here. And for example, on my cord cutting sector here, I've got a bunch of different websites that I look at regularly to come up with topics, including a subreddit where people are talking about cord cutting. It all gets mashed together into the single cord cutting feed, and that goes over to N8N. And what you're looking at here is an N8N workflow. So at 7 a.m. every morning, the thing fires off here and all this stuff happens. And what it'll do, first of all, is look at my calendars at the top of the email, which I didn't show you earlier, is my schedule for the day so I can figure out how much time I have to make videos. But below that are the new products and the cord cutting sectors here. And so if we take a look at cord cutting, for example, uh, what we've got here is a prompt. Now, what I'm doing is using the NAN AI agent feature. And what this does is it allows you to connect up different language models. I could replace Google Gemini here and swap in a different one without having to reconfigure everything. It also has a tool function where I have the RSS feed connected. So this is the TT RSS feed that we were just looking at. And this is where it gets it from. So if I were to execute this real quick, uh, what you will see is a bunch of data here that incorporates all of that RSS feed. And that is what the agent looks at and passes through to the language model to process. Now, I did try to use the RSS feed just going directly into a chat bot through the N8N system here, but I found the agent is much more efficient and processes this a lot quicker. I also found that Google Gemini's uh, API actually works really well here. Now, key to all of this is the prompt that I put together, and this took a while to get going. Initially, I just typed out what I wanted, and I found that it wasn't executing very consistently. So I then went to ChatGPT and to Gemini, and I kept going back and forth with these chat robots until I got something that worked consistently. So this is what I came up with after talking to all these AIs. And what I do is I give it instructions here that I am the host of a YouTube channel. Uh, I am an expert, you can decide whether I am or not, on cord cutting and streaming, and I'm always looking for new topics and technology to talk about and review. I give it instructions about what it's going to get. I want at least five items to talk about and provide links. I tell it what tools it has at its disposal, which is that RSS tool that we talked about. I found that telling it what to look for is really important as well. And then I had to give it kind of a structured uh, requirement here to call that tool first, because sometimes it was just making stuff up. And also for it to uh, look at the Reddit originated news items, but ignore user Q&A. So I don't want to see conversations where people are asking questions for help or whatever. I just want to see people talking about new topics and new products. And it does a pretty good job of filtering that just through that uh, item number four there. And then it, gives me, I give it a few other things here for it to look at. And then I also tell it how I want the output to come out as, which is HTML. So I gave it this little HTML template that it should use every time because this is important as it works its way throughout the process here. So that is pretty much how it works. So let me show you how all of this gets built now. So we're gonna go back here and I'm gonna hit execute workflow. And what'll happen is each of these agents is going to fire off now. So first my calendar agent is going, it has instructions to look at my calendars and output some HTML. So that's done. Now it's going to the new gadgets. The language model is first uh, hit with the prompt. It then goes and looks at the RSS feed and then it runs itself again, looking at those feed items. I found it takes a, maybe a minute or two for it to do all of its processing here. I did try to use a local model to do this and it takes a really long time and I get nothing but gibberish out of it. So a lot of tasks like this, which are very simple on the surface are actually very complex for one of these models to execute. And this is why I think some of these cloud models are still going to be far more effective into the very near future uh, because of just how involved this request is and how many uh, more parameters you need to get this right every time. So now you saw that the new product thing fired off. Now it's doing the uh, gadget section here. But because the new product one is done, I can click on this actually and show you the output. So this is what you get. This is all HTML formatted and it's given the variable name of output. 
So let me go off of this real quick and let this finish up. And you'll notice that on the end of each of these, I have something called edit fields and then it merges. And so what edit fields does is it basically renames the output from each of these. And then I feed them into a merge bucket here. So let me show you the edit fields thing here first. And basically what this does is it's a manual map. So I have it take the output from each of these models and I give it a name. So for example, the gadgets are called new products. Uh, the cord cutting is called cord cutting and the calendar is called calendar. And then it merges all of these into a single blob of data. And then from there, it gets into another edit field here where I remove some of the slashes and extra characters. This took a little bit of time to figure out, um, but this is what it did there. And then from that, it generates the HTML about what's coming up. So this is the actual email that you see here that gets put together. And so what I had uh, ChatGPT do was actually make me an email template. And then all I had to do here was just plop in the data that was generated. So as you can see here, we've got JSON calendars, JSON cord cutting. And because all of these items are already in HTML, and because I have CSS defining how that HTML works here in the template, it just takes that raw HTML and turns it into that beautiful output that you see here. And then that gets fired off to my SMTP node. It comes in over my Amazon SES that I use for some other stuff and it emails that right to me. And I also have it upload an HTML version to my, my local FTP server here on my NAS so I can pull it up in my web browser. And that is it, there is your workflow and that's how it all gets put together. But what's really cool about this is that I have control because I can define what things are important to me. If I find that it's giving me things that don't really work, I can instruct it not to. So for example, when I first started doing this on the new product section in particular, I was getting things that were not uh, exactly what I wanted. So I just added something here to say that I do not cover air purifier headphones or Bluetooth speakers. And now I no longer see any of that stuff. And if I wanted to emphasize another type of product like mini PCs or something every single time, I could add that to the mix as well. So it's much better, I think, than relying on Google's algorithm or Twitter's algorithm to figure out what I want. Here I can choose the sources that it looks through. I can choose what items in those sources that I'd like to see and that's what comes out the other end. Now with most AI models, you have to pay for API access. So when I first started playing around with this, I was using DeepSeek because it was the cheapest, but it was costing me about two or three bucks a month to use it. Uh, but Google Gemini does allow you to use its model for free, provided you work within certain limits. And there are a couple. So if we go over to the rate limit page here, uh, what you will see, I'm using the Gemini 2.5 flash model is that I can only hit it 10 times per minute. That's not a problem because I'm only hitting it four times, maybe in five minutes. Uh, and then it limits you to 250,000 tokens per minute. And it's probably possible to get close to that given the size of the RSS feed that I have, but I haven't yet hit that limitation. I don't know if it just goes a little bit longer and waiting for the next minute to pass before it lets you do the next 250,000, but so far I haven't hit that limit at all and they do limit you to 250 executions per day. But again, between this and all the other stuff I'm doing, I'm maybe doing 10 or 15 executions per day using Google Gemini. One important note though, with the free tier of Gemini is that it may also use your stuff as part of its training. So it's not something that's going to be totally private if you opt for the free tier. For this execution, it's not a big deal. I'm looking at publicly available content. It's nothing that's proprietary to my business, but if you're building these things out, you'll definitely want to check the terms of service and all the other disclaimers for the service that you're going to use to make sure that your information stays private. Again, I did try to use local models through Olama. My MacBook Pro over there, it's got 32 gigs of RAM on an M1 Max, I believe. I can actually run some pretty decent sized models, but even like the 20 billion parameter models that I could cram into its memory could not get this to work the way that ChatGPT or Gemini or DeepSeek would through their much larger cloud implementations. So this is not something, at least how I have it engineered right now, that's going to work locally unless you've got a pretty big <laughs> server that can handle it. I don't have anything in the house that can do that at the moment, so I am relying on external 
uh, chat APIs to do all of that. Now, if you want to play around with this, what's really cool is that my N8N installation is working and running off of my Synology NAS. This is open source software. They, of course, have a business around a hosted version that you can subscribe to, but you could install this yourself onto a little server like a mini PC or something or on a NAS or on a very cheap hosting provider. And what's really crazy about all of this is that I am generating this very useful set of information for free. The N8N software is free and open source, at least for the self-hosted version. The TTRSS reader that I'm using to compile the feeds is totally free and running on that same Synology NAS. And of course, the Gemini API, at least for how we're using it, is also free. Hopefully that stays that way for a while. But even if it did cost some money, it's not going to be all that expensive. Maybe a cup of coffee a month in uh, comparative cost here and you get something really useful that you have direct control over. Now I haven't done an N8N installation tutorial yet. There's a great one from Network Chuck that I suggest you start with first. He's got it running on a Docker container using a hosting provider that sponsored his video but the instructions that he's giving you here will work on a mini PC running Linux or on your a NAS device running Linux. So it's very much a simple process to get N8N up and running. You don't need to connect it to the outside world for this to work. So there's nothing inbound that you have to get the APIs to connect to. And all in, I found it to be a very simple process. In fact, this was one of the first things that I did on N8N uh, when I first started playing with it. So check it out. Let me know in the comments section what you'd like to see from me next. This is a very busy space on YouTube right now because N8N is insanely popular for doing these types of AI agent tasks. I'm trying to approach this a little bit differently. Hopefully you found this of interest, especially if you're getting frustrated with social media algorithms too. And I'd love to get some ideas for how I can make this better. Maybe some other sources I should include in my list of stuff to look at and anything else that you want to share, again, down in the comments section. That will do it for this one. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching.